All right, hey guys. Um, today I'm going to be making a tutorial about Cinema 4D basics. So basically all the basic stuff. What the heck? All right. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, we'll be going over all the basic stuff, all the basic tools, basic shapes, <laughs> animation, and that. All right, let's first start out by um, going over the tools. So um, if you go up into this, the top left corner, there's a, a red circle with an arrow in it. And all of these, if you click and hold on that icon, it pops up um, four different kinds. These are all the live selection tools. And um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, the little four arrows beside it in all different directions is the move tool. So if I come in here and add a cube, you can see I have arrows that if I click and hold on them, I can move um, my object. If you go to the next one, it's kind of like a square and then another square that's bigger. It's the size tool. So if I um, click and hold on one of the sides, the whole thing gets bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller. Um, if you click on any of those sides, it gets bigger and smaller. Um, but if you want to resize the square so that um, only one side gets bigger, you can also just click on the cube in your little objects box. And then in your attributes panel on the bottom right corner, it says all the sizes. You can make it bigger and smaller, bigger and smaller, bigger and smaller, just like that. Um, it, it says segments too segments are these little lines here and they come in handy when you're modeling or doing stuff with the object that you you want to change its shape in certain spots or anything but yeah um and then there's fillet which just rounds off the edges you can see um the next tool to the right of the size tool is the rotation tool i can rotate my object in any direction I want um, you can't you don't have to grab on to these little um, circle things you can even go right in the middle and just rotate it on your own um, all right that's basically it for the tools um, next we'll be moving on we'll move on to these tool things right here all right um, the very first one is it's a sphere and it's um it's turning into like a world or whatever it's it's basically the make editable little button or you can click c they do the same thing but if i click this um you don't see anything happen but over here in our objects panel um we get a little triangle which means that now the um, object is a polygon all right um the next little button down, it's just the arrow. You can move, um, I guess, this the object, the center of the object or whatever. I'm not really sure how to explain it, but it's kind of hard. Um, the next one where it shows three points, that's the point tool. So when you click on it, it shows all the little points. You can grab the point, you can move it up, you can move it down. Um, we'll... I'll show you if I go into the live selection tool see if I just click and hold I can click I can select a whole bunch of points and you know your points are selected when they turn orange and see I can move it all this black here means just surfaces are um, going on top of each other and yeah it's just basically moving and deforming um, the next one is basically the same concept except you can grab the edges which are these lines all over. Um, you can see uh, they turn white when I go over them. They turn yellow when I select them. The next thing, uh, the same thing except the polygons. So it's the square, um, the whole surface, I guess you can say. Um, yeah, so um, I honestly don't know what these do down here. So I'm going to leave that. All right, we're going to be moving on 
to these buttons. Um, your layout will not have this little box. Well, uh, your Cinema 3D won't have this little box uh, here or this little, um, like those little movie things that they see that I cut or whatever with the little square um, because I changed my layout to put those there. This one is just a make preview button, which you can go render, make preview, and make your little scene into a movie. This is a render region, so if I click it and then drag and click, it'll only render where I make the square. If I click this one, the one with nothing on it, it renders the whole entire screen. This one is render to picture viewer, where you can save your project files and open different ones. And then um, the last one is render settings, where you can go and you can change all your settings. All right, moving on to the square. Um, this square, if you click and hold, it's your primitives tab. It has all your basic um, shapes. Uh, so you got your spheres, you got your pyramids, you got your squares, you got your cone. It's all your basic shapes. Um, there's these four things right here. This one is to move the screen around if you just click and hold. Or the shortcut for that is one, and you can click and hold. Um, this one right here with the arrow that goes bigger than the small arrow, it's zoom in and out. Um, you can click two, or you can scroll in and out with your mouse. And what I mean by click two, you can just click two and then click on the screen and move your mouse in and out. Um, the third one is the rotate tool. You just click and hold or three. So basically it's one for the first one, two for the second one, three for the third one. And then the little box is just to bring up your four views. Um, it says top, front, side. Um, mine are different right here because I changed um, under display. It's on lines most of the time. I just had mine in quick shading so I can see what the objects look like. I'll click back here to go into my perspective view or my 3D view. Okay, the next one is uh, all your splines. So these are all the lines or whatever. They're, they're not an actual object because if I delete all these, um, I'll come in here and I'll, I'll make a, a text spline. You cannot see these objects. Um, and to make these, this a uh, 3D object, you have to go into this green square, click on it and hold, and go to extrude nerves. Basically what this does is when you drag the text onto it and make sure the little arrow is pointing down, not to the side, um, it makes it 3D now. Now that you can see it's 3D, in your attribute panel, you can change the text, you can change the font, you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, more spaces in between the letters, you can make, um, if you have text on top of each other, you can make vertical, vertical spacing more, um, separate letters, I'm not exactly sure what that does, but yeah, um, plane, you can change it, so it changes planes, uh, reverse, not really sure what that does, and all that stuff on the bottom, not sure yet. Um, if you click on the extrude nerves now, um, under object, it says movement, you can change the movement of it. Um, uh, the last movement is 20, which is the Z position, so you can make it thicker. Um, and then if caps, um, caps are, if you change it to fillet cap, it makes this extra bump, and you can change the size of it, or change how many steps you want on it. Um, makes the text nicer all the time, so now if we render, you can see there's like an extra part of it. Um, Alright, moving on. If I take, I'll take a square, and base, if I go into the, um, the green square, or the green circle here, and I grab a hypernerve, basically what the hypernerve does is it multiplies the surfaces, and it smooths it. See, um, I put a cube in there, and um, it makes the cube round because it smooths all the edges. You can change the amount of um, polygons it adds. Is if you're making a, 
let's say you're making, hmm, I don't know, let's say you're making something that's round and all smooth, and if you're making it with polygons, it'll be like square and bulky. If you put a hyper nerve on it, it'll make it smooth. All right, uh, moving on to next. Um, okay, if I come into the spline, another thing is if I grab a circle, and I grab another circle, and I drag these a bit apart like this, um, what I can do is I can come in here and I can grab a loft nerb. And what basically what the loft nerb does is if I grab both of them and I drop it in, it connects the two. It makes it an object. As you can see, um, the loft nerb it has its own settings. You can add more segments to make it smoother. You can make it just there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can do with these things. Um, organic form it doesn't really do anything, but yeah. All right, what's next? The lathe nerb. Um, all right, the lathe nerb is, um, yeah, sure. If we click on the little square and we come to the front view and then we click on a square, we'll only see the front, like exactly from the front. And if I grab uh, a linear spline or whatever, your lathe nerb is basically what it's gonna do. It's gonna take the spline that, the spline that you make and it's going to spin it in a circle around this green line. Pretty sure that you can change. Um, I guess not. Uh, yeah, it's going to go around the green line. So let's say I wanted to make a bowl. Um, I'll make just a couple polygons in the shape of a bowl. And um, you can see that I have one line and it curves like this. So it's like... I don't know, a tiny bit of a bowl. If I come into the perspective view, you can see what it looks like. And now, when I draw the spline into the lathe nerve, it spins it in a circle. And now, I got like a bowl. I'm not sure why the bottom is like that. Um, uniform. Yeah, that looks better. I just changed it to uniform points. Um, Honestly, I don't know what it does. I saw some tutorials that always change it. So I'm just... Um, but yeah, it basically spins your line in a circle. All right, moving on. Um, sweep nerves. As you can see from the picture of a sweep nerves, it's kind of like a pipe. Um, you're going to need another spline for this or whatever. And let's take a uh, helix. And um, it's, this helix is kind of like a spring. So if we drop the helix into the sweep nerves, uh, nothing happens. Where is it? I think I might have to change. Oops, changed the wrong one. Parallel movement. Hmm. I'm kind of making a fool of myself right now. All right, we'll, we'll use a bias spline again. I'll come back in the front and we'll just make a random little line. And with the, the Bezier, Bezier, I don't know how to pronounce it. If you click and hold, uh, these black things come out and that's basically just the angle, you can adjust the angle that you want it coming from. But yeah, um, now if I take, actually that one, if I take and I drop it in there, this thing is not working. It's, it's, I think it should work for you. I'm not sure why it's not working for me. Um, yeah. Moving on, I'll try to fix that. Uh, let's see, I'm not sure what these ones do. This last one, um, you probably have to find a different tutorial for that. <coughs> All right, the array. If I grab an array, 
I'm gonna grab a sphere. If I drop the sphere into the array, um, it puts it in a circle. If you come out of the array settings, you can make, uh, yeah, my computer kind of freaks out sometimes. You can make the radius of them bigger. You can make um, having less of them or more of them. You can have a whole lot of them. Um, you can have them at different heights. Um, you can have the little, I don't know what you can call that, frequency. Yeah, that's basically what the array does. And you can put anything in the array and it'll just make it um, bool. All right, if I take two cubes, for example. Oops. And I... Oh, shoot. I made one editable. Didn't want to do that. All right. And if I moved one cube up to the side and like that. And let's say I wanted to take a, a bit of this corner. I can move this cube here. And the one that you want cut, you put in first. And then the one that you want to cut, you put in set. Oh, sorry. My bad. The one that you want um, to be cut, put it in first. And you might the one that you want cut, put it in second. And see, it removes the chunk where um, this cube was. If I change, you can see it cuts more out of it. You can see it's kind of like stairs now. Um, you can move it down, you can move it to the side, and it basically just cuts it. Um, all right. Spline mask. I went over that in um, one of my tutorials about the bevel text. It's hard to explain. Um, symmetry. If you have a symmetry, um, let's say I have hemisphere. I use my rotation tool, and if I rotate it 90 degrees, and I drag and drop it into the symmetry, um, I'm pretty sure... What angle is it? Right there. Um, on the X, Y, you can adjust it. Oh, man. It mirrors the image um, of your thing. And you can have a tolerance so they melt together. So this is my object. And if I move it, you can see they move further apart because it's mirroring the image. Um, and then let's say I leave, I think I can do this. I'll just grab this. And if I put them further apart than I probably can, and I and I put the tolerance up, they melt together, so it looks like a single object. So if you're modeling something, you only really have to make half of it, and then you can symmetry it, and the other half will pop up. Um, oops, wrong one. Uh, Metaball. Uh, makes oh no we don't want those we want spheres meta ball all right if we drag and drop both of those into the meta ball it kind of makes it look liquidy it kind of just um melts them together i guess you can say it melted um, you can experiment with that to see. Connect, I'm not sure really what it does. Um, atom array. If you grab an atom array and you drop the sphere onto it, um, it makes it kind of like, I guess you can say an atom, aka the name. Uh, you can make the cylinders smaller. You can make the balls smaller so you can't see them. You can make subdivisions smaller. I don't know. It just makes it kind of like a skeleton of the thing. Whatever the, how many segments there are. See, all the little lines. Um, the points of your sphere where the lines connect, that's where the circles are going to pop up. And the edges are going to be these lines. Um, I wish I knew what these guys uh, connect construction plane or instance was. I don't. Um, these are just a whole whack of deformers. Um, see how much time that is. No, oh, 20 minutes. Shit. Um, there's 
and I, I don't have enough time to go over them all. The they pretty much explain themselves. Um, the lights, the floors, and all that those explain themselves. Lights you can change. Um, these are all just different emitters. Like if you grab an emitter, you can put a sphere in it, and then it'll shoot out spheres for how however long or your settings. Um, that's uh, shoot. I still have to go for animation. All right, let's get animation. Um, I'm gonna grab a light by clicking, holding, and then just going on light. And I'm going to move it, as you can see, the light is up here, and it shoots down on the object, and now you can only see this. And if I click and drop a, click and drag and drop a floor, um, the floor is infinite, it goes on forever, um, it doesn't look like it, but it actually does. Alright, um, to animate an object, um, I'll show you the, there's two ways. One, um, let's say you want it to start here. Um, on this timeline down here, yours will be 90, mine's at 250. Um, you go to the keyframe 01, so that's the start. And then there's this red key. Click it, and it'll add a keyframe. Nothing happens. Now, let's say two seconds later, you want the sphere to move to the right. So you'll move up to 60 because it's 30 frames per second in this program you'd move it to the right and you would add another keyframe and as you can see this little line pops up here so if we go back and now we click play your sphere moves to the side like that um, you can either keep doing that and then click keyframe every time or you can click the middle one which is automatic keyframing so whatever whenever you move something in your scene it automatically adds a keyframe so if I add if I go up to 100 and I move it all the way over here it automatically adds the keyframe I don't have to click anything but sometimes this is bad because if you're moving something and you forget it's on it'll add a keyframe and then it'll screw some things up I don't use this a lot but it's good if you're just doing simple animation um, that's basically all it is, the animation, just, that's it, um, there's, you can add materials onto objects, which is right down here in the materials panel, and just, you can grab new shaders, you can grab, you can create your own by double clicking or file new material, you can just add a color, like mine, orangish, um, and then if I click the render button, it'll render it out. Um, I'm going to click my make preview button. For you, it'll be render make preview. Um, I'll make this small, so I'll like 720. And I'm just going to set it to lowest settings. And if I click OK, down here, the, uh, thing, um, the bar is loading. So we'll just wait for this to render. Um, I'll come back when it's rendered out. <coughs> Alright guys, um, I think it's rendered out now. As you can see, when it's finished rendered, your um, picture view will pop up. And if I click play, you can see the sphere moves over there, and then it moves over there. Um, you can see how the light affects wherever, the light is right here. Um, you can see how it the color is always pointing towards the light because the color is the part that's lit up. Um, you can also add shadows to your lights. I like shadow map soft the best. Um, it adds a big nice shadow here. Um, that's basically the basics of Cinema 4D. There's a lot more stuff up here about modeling and MoGraph and stuff but I just don't have enough time to cover it all um so yeah that's basically the basics of Cinema 4D I hope you guys learnt it um I hope this helps all the beginners out there um comment if you if you have any questions or any suggestions for tutorials um subscribe if you're not like the video if you like this tutorial and yeah that's basically it all right see you guys